Welcome, 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 welcome to My Gospel Soul. This is Pastor Jay. Haven't been on in a couple of days, but it's all good. Amen. I decided to join you today just to lift up the mighty name of Jesus. I want to share some. <laughs> I went into prayer last night um, doing the prayer watches. But I went into prayer last night because something was pressing on my spirit. Uh, amen. Um, dealing with this this um, broadcast with a uh, popular television um, pastor. And, well, he's not just a television pastor, but, you know, he has a church. And uh, I listened to his sermons and everything, and they blessed me. And it was a phrase that he said during one of his sermons that really ha has caused an uproar. So I want to talk about that a little later on in the broadcast. Um, also want to talk about um, does uh, uh, is it okay as Christians to be saying curse words? Y'all, when y'all know, we call it cussing. So just trying to uh, just talking about it a little bit, Amen. And it caused me to put a lot of things in check with my own self praise God amen what I say how I say it when I do it you know and uh, how it's done all this kind of stuff praise God because there's men and women of God people are watching our life praise God and uh, we have to we ask God well God called us into ministry he called us to do a work and somewhere in there we have to make the decision if we're going to do it the way God say do it or we're going to do it the way our flesh is rising up to do it. And I'm going to just be real with you, you know, it kind of, when I listened to the words that were said, it kind of got me, kind of got me. And uh, God took me to a scripture on it, so I'm going to share that a little later. But I want to start this broadcast off with prayer. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you right now for your grace and for your mercy. I thank you for another opportunity to share the gospel, the word of God. Lord, I thank you for being a word-based pastor, Father God, and I repent for any sin that I have committed, knowingly or unknowingly. Lord, because it is my desire to be in right standing with you. It is my desire, Father God, to walk in your will, to walk in, in your order, not mine, but yours. And I ask you, Father God, to help me to be humble and help me to share what's, uh, uh, this word today this, that, that you have placed on my heart to share, not in judgment, Father God, but just in awareness, being aware of who we are and the responsibility of it. And Lord, I just thank you right now uh, for it in the mighty name of Jesus. So, I mean, have you commanded your morning? Let's first start there. Have you commanded your morning? Have you uh, put yourself, started your day off right by saying, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Lord, you are my everything. Lord, you woke me up this morning, started me on my way. Lord, I, Lord, I decree and declare that this day, will be blessed i decree and declare that prosperity will come in this day your favor will be shown uh, uh towards me and those that are attached to me father god this day have you done that praise god have you got up praise god and began to speak his manifold blessing into your life praise god i want to encourage you amen to get the my gospel soul app if you get the my gospel soul app I have a favor statement in there, praise God. And uh, in that favor statement, um, you're able to speak favor into your life every day. Even if you don't know, this is for those of you that don't know what you want to speak or, or whatever. You know, it's not the prominent favor speaking affirmation type situation. It's just a guideline, praise God, on... Um, what you can start speaking into your own life praise god and i like i say i encourage you to get the my gospel soul app all right and what i'll do is 
since um, in, in just a minute I'll, be, I'll place the app on my Facebook page that's uh, Pastor Janice Jack, uh, Pastor Janice Cook Evo. I just got married, so my name has changed. <laughs> I'm so used to saying Pastor Jackson. Amen. I have to adjust to my new name, Evo. Evo. Amen. So Pastor Janice Evo. Hallelujah. Amen. Just giving glory and honor. Amen. To my Father God. Amen. And also giving honor to my husband. Amen. Uh, I love you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So, as you can see, I'm looking at the app now. And so, I'm going to go over into our favor statement. And I just want you to hear this statement. I want to give a shout out to Overseer Elliot. She blessed me with this statement. And so, ever since I read it, I have been reading it on my show. I got it on my on my blog talk radio i have it everywhere because it's some words in here praise god that we need to speak over our life daily praise god and understanding who god is in our lives praise god and what he has in store for us praise god amen and i always tell y'all i'm coming from my home you see my artwork right above my head that's some of my artwork amen just just sharing okay um and the favor statement goes, God favors me today. God honors me today. I am a success today. I have God's special favor on me today. He makes his face to shine upon me today. He is gracious to me today. I am someone very special with the Lord. I like people and they like me. I am flowing in God's love and others are receiving healing both in mind and body through my life and ministry. I am growing in the Lord. I am waxing strong in spirit. I am growing in wisdom and I have favor with God and man. I obtain favor in the sight of all who look upon me. I shall have favor today with people. I will meet nice people today. I shall have good relationships with people today. I shall favor and honor others today. I will be a blessing to the Lord. I will be a blessing to others. I am a person of prayer. God is bringing me into favor and success today. Confess favor with people, business, family, friends, city, your city, your boss, and your co-workers. And everybody you come in contact with. Amen. Confess favor. Amen. You're a child of the king, praise God. God is in your life. You have a right to his unmerited favor. You have a right to it, praise God. You just have to claim it, lay hold to it, and walk in it. Amen? Walk in it. I've also been talking a lot lately about uh, repentance and just always walking, amen, in humility and, and always ready, amen, to repent. And I, when God shows you something in your life, that is not like him that's not lining up being ready uh to to humble yourself amen and surrender to repentance praise god understanding that you need him you need amen glory to god that just to be able to uh lay hold on redemption praise god to lay hold on restoration and sometimes we stray praise god nobody is perfect amen glory to god that's why we have his word we have his word, praise God, so that we could uh so that we can open it and understand what things will separate us from him, what things will cause amen a breach <laughs> my God in our salvation or in our walk with him, praise God. And uh I always you know, I I just want to let you know, praise God, that there is nothing too hard for God. There is nothing going on in your life. There is nothing, amen, that you have done, praise God, that's too hard for God. There is nothing, amen, glory to God, that, that God won't forgive you for. There is nothing, amen, that, that, and I know people probably have come into your life and told you, oh, you've done too much. Oh, you'll never be uh, 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 this and you'll never be that. You'll always be, the, be uh, a mess up. Let me tell you something. God is a God of restoration. God is a God of, a, of another chance, a new beginning. Uh, <laughs> he, he, listen, listen, there is nothing too hard for God. Amen. 
So, but you have to be willing to admit that there is a problem. Amen. You have to be willing to admit this, praise God. And sometimes we're, we're not all that willing to admit that we're wrong. Praise God. But that's why I say that humility, amen, and, and being able to repent and allow God to clean you up. Praise God. Allow God, amen, to set your feet, praise God, on a solid foundation, which is in him. Some of us backslide. Some of us go back to our old ways. Some of us go back, praise God, amen, to 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 dealing with stuff that's easy. That everything that's easy, praise God, <laughs> my God, is not the right, it, it, it is no good for your walk. Amen. Yes, uh, pursuing pursuing peace and, 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 and living a lifestyle that's pleasing and acceptable unto God is not easy all the time. This world is made up of temptation. It's made up of, of uh, all kinds of pitfalls and all kinds of hindrances. It's made up of that stuff, praise God. But I promise you, if you learn to lean and depend on Jesus Christ, he'll make everything all right. He'll make everything all right, praise God. And I just want to encourage you to do so. Amen. And um, like I said, I was going to share a little bit. I was vexed a little bit in my spirit, praise God, and uh, so right now I want to share, I write a blog, you know, and uh, it's my own little personal blog, I have a little fun on there, sharing different things that I experience on this journey, amen, life is a journey, praise God, because I'm trying to get somewhere, hallelujah, amen, I'm just, and I'm trying to enjoy my life and have peace. But I wanted to share a little bit, praise God, about this uh, phrase that was used from a secular artist, and a pastor used it in his sermon. And uh, I was disturbed by it. I did a radio broadcast, but I'm, I'm going to read my blog first, and then I'm going to talk about it, and and why it disturbed me so. Amen. Not the, not the pastor himself. Uh, because I've heard him preach before and his and and you know so this is not him but I but God gave me another gave me something from that so I wrote today on my journey I really have been having some serious encounters and I believe that they have uh, been purposeful lately God has been bringing some things into perspective for me I was raised in a male dominated religion called Church of God in Christ I know you would say why would a Jesus based religion be lined and laced with male domination well let me explain what I mean women could sing, cook, speak but could not lead not because they were not capable but only because they were female so when I stepped into a pastoral position you could imagine my family's rejection of that move it's handled mostly by silence nobody brings it up nobody talks about it oh shit past okay <laughs> yeah I can sing at anniversary service and I can speak as a missionary but nothing else. All right. And then I put enough about that. <laughs> and many of you that, that are uh, tuning in and you know about the Church of God in Christ and even some Baptist churches don't believe in women pastoring and uh, leading anything. You know, we are supposed to be silent. We're supposed to, uh, if we got a question, we're supposed to ask our husband. And they use for a basis t uh, Timothy. <laughs> the book of Timothy but I will tell you right now praise God amen we really have to study to show ourselves approved of work we have need and not be ashamed amen glory to God so we get the proper understanding and then also people use uh, a woman should not usurp authority over a man what usurp means to take authority by force praise God so I don't believe amen glory to God that I'm in a position where I'm taking anything by force Amen. Glory to God. But these are some of the things as a woman minister I face. 
Now, to uh, I go on to read my blog, and, and I wrote, Today I was doing my radio show, this was on yesterday, and decided to read from some, uh, from some news report from news1.com. It was going well until I read an article where a popular pastor, doctor, if you will, has used lyrics from a secular artist song during one of his sermons. Now, this has been done before, but the outrage stems from the choice of lyrics that he chose. These H-O-E-S ain't loyal. Before I knew it, I had just broadcast <laughs> that phrase across the airways, internet that is. I continued on with the show. After the show, I went to YouTube to view this video sermon just to hear what he was expressing that brought this on. It didn't match up. It bothered me so much I deleted my broadcast for the day and decided to pray about it. Couldn't shake it from my spirit considering the standard we are held to as ministers of the word. It is, is it appropriate? And those of you that are listening, if you would like to leave a comment, and if you know the particular situation I'm talking about, please do not put the pastor's name in it. I just want to hear your opinion on sharing uh, rap slurs, street slang over the pulpit. You know, and, and is it appropriate? In 1 Corinthians 15 and 33, where we'll be coming from today, it says, Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Now, before I read the rest of the blog, I just want to talk on that for a moment. Evil communication corrupts good manners. But the scripture starts off by saying, be not deceived. Don't, don't, it's some place. Listen, it is possible that you could be around a bunch of people doing the same thing. that may not be right, but call themselves Christians or, or, or that, that are saved, but they're doing and, and you pick up what they're doing. In other words, you begin to compromise. You begin to justify. You begin to say, oh, this is okay. Oh, I got to, you know, it ain't all that bad. Oh, I'm still saved. Oh, I'm saved. And before you know it, you picked up some, some, some uh, habits. You picked up some bad habits. You picked up uh, some things that just really are not conducive to your spiritual life, praise God, to your spiritual walk. It says, be not deceived. So, it's possible for us to deceive ourselves. And that's another scripture in the word of God. We would deceive ourselves. We would become lovers of ourselves. We would become boastful and arrogant. <laughs> I mean, just looking to ourselves and our own mentalities and our own way of thinking. Uh, 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 given over to a reprobate mind to where we we are in our wrong but we still believe that we are right that's step deception i go on in my blog to say this made me consider the words i say the lingo we the lingo we pick up from our children music and the and um the background of it you know it's a lot of sayings that the saints are saying and it's a lot of things that the saints are doing just to win the teenagers over but we have to be careful that we are not adopting the secular mentality in order to win the world to the what? Church? Or are we trying to win the world with the world to the world? God doesn't need, to me, God doesn't need the assistance of the devil. God is an originator and I think it's an it's a insult to uh, the authority and the power of God, the creator of all things. To take an imitation or to use the use the tactics of an imitator, oh my God, to um to bring people in to the kingdom of God. God doesn't need help from the secular world to bring in his children. Listen, the word works all by itself. Why can't we just be word based? Why can't we just be faith based, word based? Praise God. In the beginning was the Word. He is the Word. The Word was with Him. Come on now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He is the Word. He's everything. Everything we need is in His Word. 
and I don't believe that we need to to fit in or compromise uh, and use worldly slang just to feel popular or make others uh, um, follow after us because we can be cool like that. I don't believe it's necessary. And like I say, I check myself because sometimes I find myself saying little slang, slang from the world. Little, little words. And, and I remember my mother told me one time, Janice, don't say that anymore. I, I think I said people be tripping. And it was, it was a minute ago. And at first, I was like, Mama, it's just a word. But then, like I said, when this happened, it really made me think about what she said to me. Evil communication corrupts good manners. The more you cater, the more you compromise to the things of the world, the more you begin to say, well, it's okay. And the worse things get, sagging in the church, you know, me, uh, uh, young boys come in, their pants hanging, you know, and they got caps on in the building, caps turned to the side, and, you know, no respect for the house of God. God has called us to a standard, and we have to, we have to, um, live in that standard praise God and don't get me wrong praise God I've dealt with rap and, and all of these different things yes I have amen glory to God but at the same time praise God let's if we're going to operate in our gift let's do it in respect to the kingdom of God hallelujah amen so going on with my blog praise God I wrote, uh, we have compromised our way right into a place of self-deception, deceiving ourselves to the point of being comfortable enough to speak vulgar slurs across God's congregation. The women in the video were shouting and laughing and enjoying the sermon. Don't get me wrong, the words that he spoke around the phrase will empower you, get you, get you carried away. I was torn because his ability to deliver the word of God has been made evident to me through confirmation of some of the things that God has called me to do. I shared this video on my blogs and Facebook page. So what do I do with this? Can omit every single sermon he has ever preached. Don't want to. My prayers are with him in hopes that those that listen don't get the impression that this is a new move of God. Amen. You know, I I listened to this. I was so bothered. And not 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 with Jamal. Not with <laughs> oh my God. Not with this pastor. But I was I was concerned about myself. You know, and I believe in taking responsibility for me. I, I begin to check myself. I begin to check how I carry myself. I begin to check how I uh, treat others. I begin to do a self-evaluation of, of, of me, of my actions. Amen. I, not in, I don't want to judge this pastor. I just want to deal with me. It brought me to a place of dealing with me. Dealing with me and how I speak to my children. Dealing with me and how I speak with, with my husband. Dealing with me and how I speak with my friends. Being a Christian. Being a child of God. Amen. Glory to God. And, and my convictions as a child of God. Not as a religious person. Not as a uh, uh, traditional religious person. But as a spiritual being that has accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Amen. And I, I want to deal with me. And I'm believing that on this journey, and, and those of you can check my blog out at JaniceJackson.wordpress.com. I have, I, listen, I want to be in right standing with God. I want to be in a place where God can trust me. I want to be in a place, praise God, where people, when they see me, they know what they're getting. They're going to get the word of God. And, and most of the people that I talk to in ministry, they know you, you're going to get the word of God. But also, if you come to my house, I want you to understand, even at my house, it's about the Word of God. Even in, in every relationship that I deal with, it's about the Word of God. Amen. I mean to make it to heaven. I don't want, you know, I also saw a YouTube video on uh, um, where a young man was talking about 
the the this pastoral situation and his mouth was so vulgar towards this pastor towards churches towards women towards you you see what i'm saying and and i immediately felt like what just happened <laughs> you know listening to how easy it was for him to deface this pastor to deface black women to deface um my god to, to deframe like they say amen black people black men women children everything he he was just outrageous and i said wow when when we as christians can uh, uh something we say can be taken and and used to feed this type of evil this type of um evil communication <laughs> my god it just blew my mind so i just you know wanted to take our time this morning and talk to you a little bit about that again that scripture for those of you that are listening that scripture is first corinthians 15 and 33 be not deceived evil communication corrupts good manners it is no way possible to use evil communication and still and still feel as though that you are mannerable still feel as though that you are respectful it, it really is unnecessary so at this moment at this time i definitely want to pray for those praise god that may be listening and you know in your heart of hearts that you have dealt with that you have dealt with uh, vulgar communication uh, uh, evil communication coming from your lips okay amen you know that you have have uh in some sort of some way walked away from god or or you have begun to say words curse words you have begun to cuss people out you have begun to justify cuss and justify this type of communication and 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 i and let me tell you something i had to repent because i said it myself god did not say that we couldn't cuss god did it is not in the bible that we can't cuss okay i said it but guess what god took me right to the scripture so in correction <laughs> In correction, Pastor Jay is telling you today, praise God, evil communication corrupts good manners. And if I'm telling you, I, <laughs> I was rebuked. Come on now. I was rebuked. And I'm telling you today, God is letting you know that all that cussing and let me tell you something. I was, it was a lady pastor. She was cussing, cussing, cussing in the church. And uh, I never would say anything to her, and and it disturbed me so much. But I didn't, I didn't say anything about it. I did not express uh, my um, my feelings on it. I did not express my feelings on it, and but I was upset about it. It was years ago, and then I words would come out of my mouth, and I was uh, and and. After a while, I began to deceive myself. I began to say, oh, it's okay, I'm grown, this, that, and the other. But guess what? I couldn't I couldn't get up in front of people after I had just used such language. And God, that's when God brought me to the place where he reminded me of that woman that that was cussing it, cursing in that church. She was standing there bold faced cursing in that church, and I never said a word. And God said, Now look at you. And he brought it back around so that I could understand that we are to stand for righteousness. Praise God. We are to stand for righteousness. Oh, yeah. I have some life lessons. Amen. That God has taught me hands on. He didn't just uh, pour it, just tell me right from wrong. And then that's just how it was. There's some things that I had to experience and learn firsthand. So that when I stand before the people and I tell you that tell you this is right and this is wrong according to to God, then you understand I've been there, done that. Praise God. So I pray I, I want to pray with you today, praise God again. Those of you that um 
those of you that are dealing with that vulgarness, that not be, that cursing and feeling like you just can't get a breakthrough from it. I just want to today to believe God, amen, for your deliverance from that. And so I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray and believe God, amen, to deliver you from that type of communication. We can do better. We can find better ways, amen, to express ourselves. We can find better ways, praise God, amen. Even when we get angry, the Bible said get angry but sin not. Even when we get fed up, praise God, there is a better way to communicate things, praise God. And my grandma used to say this, if you don't have nothing good to say, then don't say nothing at all. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, so I just want to pray for you today. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we just come to you right now, Father God, asking for forgiveness for any sin or that we have committed knowingly or unknowingly. And Father God, just thanking you for everything that you're doing for us in our lives. Lord, we thank you for this word today, Father God. Help us to submit unto the word through and through, Father God. Without deceiving ourselves, without compromise, Father God. But holding our, ourselves to a standard, Father God. Lord, being being holy, amen, before you, Father God. Caring about our garment. Caring about uh, being clean and, and, and our minds being purified, Father God. And taking on the mind of Christ, amen. Lord of God, and not walking in what would Jesus do, but what did Jesus do, praise God. Lord, and he came to seek and save those which was lost. So, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I just ask, Father God, those that are humbling themselves at the end of this broadcast, that are humbling themselves, saying, Lord, I need you. I need a Savior. I'm broken and contrite right now. My language, my the words that come out of my mouth, are damaging the words that come out of my mouth are full of uh, hatred and pain the words that come out of my mouth father god are killing uh other people father god lord help us to understand that the tongue is a ready writer and the tongue life and death lies in the power of our own tongue clean us up father god clean up our language that we speak positive things instead of murder and murder and 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 and, and uh and death it, it, that we speak father god words of edification father god and not words father god of 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 evil and lord we thank you for it right now in the mighty name of jesus lord we glorify you and we pray amen that this broadcast has been a blessing unto you a sweet smelling savor unto you in your son jesus name we pray amen and amen god bless you and thank you for tuning in to my gospel soul on Ustream.